Day three. <clears throat> um, nope. Day three. No. Yes. Okay, here we go. So Tim is a car salesman and earns 5% of the price of the car he sells. Last month he sold eight cars for a total of $152,558.75. To How much did he make? Well, obvious, well, I guess he's working on straight commission. He doesn't get paid anything else, but, uh, but commission. So the commission is a percent, right? That he, that he gets times the sales. So he's getting 5% or 0 0.05 and the amount of sales that he did was $152,558.75. So let's see how much he took home. 0 0.05 times 152558.75. And he took home about 7,627, which is this one. Okay. Randy bought a pen on sale. The sale price was $3, $2.34, so that was a sale. The original price of the pen was $3.24. What percent did he save? Okay, so this is a percent of change problem, right? We want to find out what the percent of change. Um, so the new price is $2.34. The original price was $3.25 over the new price, or old price, which is $3.25, right? So it obviously decreased, right, because it was a discount. So let's find out what that is. 2.34 minus 3.25 is going to give you a negative number, negative 0 0.91, which you're going to divide by 3.25, divided by 3.25, and that's going to give us negative 0 0.28. The negative there uh, insinuates that it was a discount, not insinuates, it's, it is a discount. So on 0 0.28 as a percent is 28%, and the answer is me. Four. Use the nutrition value label to ask the following question. What percent of total calories comes from fat? Well, what's the total? Total number of calories is 150. How much of it comes from fat? 90. So 90 calories are from fat at a total of 150. So all you've got to do is 90 divided by 150, which is 0 0.6. You change that to percent, it becomes 60%. So 60% of the calories here come from fat. Here are three stacks of coins. Stack A has 20. I'll write 20. Stack B has 13 as 20. And I'm going to assume that this is stack B, which is 13. And stack C has 19. What percent of total coins are presented by stack B? So there's a total of 20, 19 plus 13 is 32. There's a total of 42 coins. 13, then 30 of them are from stack B. So 13 out of 42 is 0.30, uh -oh. 0.395, which would be about 31%. Nothing is close. Did I made? Oh, it's 12 out of 42. 12 divided by 42, 28.5. New, what? New, okay, let me just do 20. Mass 19, mass 13 equals 52, and I can't add, so it's 52 total, and 13 of them are, so that would be 25%, actually. 13 divided by 52 is 25%, so the really answer is a wow. Owen bought a coat at 5% off the regular price of $60. Which process can Owen use to find the amount of his discount? So how much was his discount? So $60, you want to find out just what the discount was, you multiply by... 0.05, which is 5%. And do we have one? Yeah. Multiply 5 by, no, not this one. Multiply 5 by 60 by 0 0.05. And the answer is 50. 6. Conrad went to the mall to buy a fifth by CD for his brother. The original price of CD was $15.95. Um, there was a 15% discount. What was the cost of the CD after this discount? So $15.95. If you get a discount of 15%, it means that you still have to pay for 85% of the original price. So this is a faster way, 15.95 times 
which is thirteen dollars and fifty six cents. Okay, or you could have done fifteen point ninety five times zero point fifteen to find the discount, and then whatever answer you got, you subtract that from the original, and you still get thirteen fifty six. Ten, the population, and there's a increase. Um, town increased from 12,800 to 14,200 over a 10-year period. What was the percentage of increase? So the new population is 14,200. The old was 12,800. And we're going to divide that by 12,800. Very simple problem. Minus 12,800 equals divided by 12,800 equals 0 0.109. So if you look at your calculator, and you can see that we're going about, that says 0.109%, so get, be careful, because that's definitely not the answer, because you have to move the decimal two over, right? That becomes 10.9, 10.9, and I guess they're rounding it to the nearest percent, whole percent, so that the answer is B. Very tricky of them to write, z uh, what do you call, 0.109%, right? Right, so uh, you, a lot of you might have done that, so just be, remember that you have to change the, per, the decimal to percent by multiplying by 100 or mo moving the decimal to over to the right. 11, the cost of 200 gallons of fuel is $425.52. That includes an 8% tax. What's the cost of one gallon of oil before tax is added? So after tax, Okay, so we want to find the original price. Um, so one way of saying that is that... Uh, 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 how can I rephrase this? Stop, 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 stop. Um, so if you think about this, this $425.56 includes... 100% of the original price plus 8% tax. Agreed? Right, so whatever the price was plus 8% tax. So one way we can rephrase this question is saying 108% uh, of a number of a number is $425.52. Now, if we change this to algebra, uh, you know, to an expression, algebraic expression, I'm going to change this to this. Of means time, so number means x, equals 425.52. I can divide both sides by 108, 0 0.108, 0 0.08, 0 0.108, 0 .08, 425.52 divided by 0 0.108, and that should give us the... Uh, 425.52 divided, divided by 0 0.108. That gives us... One, sorry, and my mistake was this. It's not 0.1, it's 1.08. Oops, 1.08. So remember, we're moving the decimal 2 over. 1, 2 becomes 1.08. So my apologies. 425.52 divided by... 1.08, and I'm going to rewrite this, 1.08, and it's going to give us, why is it still sh giving me this problem? Oh, that's right. It's going to give me $394, right, before taxes. Now, before, t and that is the price for 200, 200 gallons, so $294. I pay, I get 200 gallons before taxes. So the price per gallon divided by 200, divided by 200. So 394 divided by 200 equals 1.97. So each gallon cost me $1.97 before taxes. Uh, <sighs> According to the nutritional facts label on a yogurt, each container has three grams of fat. 
So, and three grams of fat represents five percent of the recommend recommended daily allowance. So, um, how much, how many grams of fat in total are you? Is it rock recommended that you consume a day? So we can use a percent proportion here. So remember, percent proportion. This was part total. This was a hundred percent. Nope. This was, uh, this was a hundred and part total, and this was a percent. Right out of a hundred. So, 5% out of 100, uh, that 5% represents 3 grams, which is part. And so, how many grams of fat am I allowed per day according to, according to a recommended daily allowance? So, uh, this is, can you find a relationship? No. Uh, <laughs> hang on a second, I didn't want to do this in this manner. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Is there a different way? Hang on a second. Well, I guess not. So, I, there is, but I don't want to confuse you guys. So, if you set a proportion this way, we can cross multiply. Okay. So, x times 5 is 5x. 3 times 100 is uh, 300. And divide by 5, divide by 5. 300 divided by 5 equals 60. So, what do you call? The, the government says that you should, you should, what do you call? Consume 60 grams of fat per day. That's a lot of fat. So another one, you just figure out another way. So think about this. This is 5, right? 5%. Five In 100, there's 5 how many 5%s are in the hundred? There's 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah? So 5% represents how many grams? 3 grams. This 5%? 3 grams. Just in the yogurt, there's this much. 5% of what you should be consuming uh, every day. So if you were to eat 100% of the daily recommended amount of fat, so each 5% represents 3 grams, that's another 3 grams, another 3 grams, another 3 grams, all the way down. And then how many groups of 3 would you have? You would have 20. 20 times 3 is 60. So that's what your answer is. Then that. 12. Looks like one of these. Jessica deposits $30 in account that pays an annual interest rate of 2% compounded twice a year. Duh. Okay, a little bit different here. So I'm going to come back to this question. I'm going to skip this question because we, we really don't do compound interest. I did not read this and put the wrong question in here. So uh, it's a different formula. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that one. On Monday, Lisa's fishbowl contained one gallon of water. On Friday, the fishbowl contains 75%. 75, 0.75 gallon of water, so obviously it's leaking. What percent, what was the percentage, what percentage did the amount of water in Lisa's fishbowl decrease? So, we're looking for a percent. Um, the new amount of water is 0.75. We used to have one, that's the old one, over one. That's going to be negative 0.25 over one. And if you divide that, you get, yeah, you get just 0 0.25. So it's decreased by, and negative 0 0.25, if you, change, if you change it to percent, you move it to over, it becomes 25%, and we have here. It's not going to be negative, because the negative is just a little symbol there that tells us that it decreased. Okay, so you will always look for an answer that's positive, actually. Okay. I don't believe I got, I did the compound twice. Nine, the regular price of a pair of glasses is 90. The glass on the sale, are on sale for discount price of $76.50. What was the percent of discount? So, okay. Um, so we're going to do 70.50. And here's a percent of decrease, minus 90, over 90, right? You're going to get a negative number, that's okay, because it's just telling you that it decreased in price, minus 90, 
equals negative 13.5, which we're going to divide by 90, and that's going to give us 0 0.15, negative, which we change to a percent, is 15%. So therefore, it, the negative tells us that it was a decrease of 15%. Jason bought a jacket on sale for 50% off the original price and another 25% off discounted price. If the price originally cost 88, what was the final price? So here's the price of my jacket. If you, if you multiply by 50%, obviously that's easy. So that's after 50% discount, the price of the jacket is 44. So now the jacket is 44, and you have another coupon that says, "Hey, take 25% off." And if you t and again, uh, I much rather you know that if you take 25% off, you are paying for 75% of the value. So it's 44 times 0 0.75, so you end up paying. $33. Again, those of you who are not and want to find out what this is, what's 25% of 44? Which is $11. And then you go 44 minus the discount of $11 gives you a final price of 33 You can tell it's the same answer. 14. Stuart is buying a pair of jeans. That costs $40. Uh, we want to find the final price. So if it's on sale for 80%, 20% off, it means we pay for 80% of the jeans, right? And after we multiply, we're going to add the tax of 8%, which is the price of the jeans, right? One and the tax. So all you have to do is this. 40 times 0 0.8 times 1.08. And your final price ends up being... $34.56. That would be your final price. Now, those of you who don't like to do that, you can do 40% times 0 0.20. Find out what the discount is, which is $8. So 40 minus 8 is 32. And then from 32, now you find out what the tax is. So multiply by 0 0.08, which is $2.56. And then add the price of the jeans, $32 plus 2.56. And you get $34.56. It is the same exact thing. This is so much effective. The table below shows the number that shows the price of movie tickets. So one movie ticket is six dollars and fifty cents, blah blah blah. Write an equation that can be used to find the price P of one ticket. So you can do find the constant proportionality while well, it is proportional, right? So K equals this is X and this is Y, Y over X, and Y is six fifty over one. So the constant proportionality is six fifty. Now remember, from that we can use this, y equals kx, y, and we know what k, k is right now, 650, 6.5, and then x. So our equation becomes this. Do we have something like this? Uh, but instead of y and x, we use p and t, 8. 15, two investments plan, uh, simple interest, simple interest, okay. So let's find out. Adele, so plan A, I equals PRT. She's going to put $2,500 in the bank account times 0 0.035 times three years. And plan B, she's going to do $5,000. She's going to put in the principal 5,000 times 0 0.04. And she's going to leave, in the, leave it in the bank for one year. So let's find out what happens. So 2,500 times 0 0.035 times 3, that means that she, the bank is going to pay her $262.50 plus whatever she put in the beginning. And in plan B, 5,000 times 0 0.04, it means that the bank is going to give her $200 after one year. So where would you like to leave your money? Would you leave it in the bank for three years? Or would you leave it for in, uh, in the bank for one year? But obviously the principle is different. Once you have one, you have to put five thousand dollars, whereas the other one you only put twenty-five hundred dollars. So Adele would earn three hundred thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents less with Plan A. Three hundred? Well, no, I don't think so. Adele would earn twenty-five dollars more with Plan A than Plan B. No, did I do something wrong? Adele would earn $62.50 ah, more with plan A. Yes, that makes sense, right? Because she's making $200 here. 
and two hundred sixty-two dollars and fifty cents over here. So that this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. So this one makes sense. Plan A she makes more money. So this one is the correct one. And D says the Dell would earn six thousand two hundred fifty. No way. She's not even making anywhere near that. The point, right? The interest that the bank is gonna give her is two sixty-two point five here and two hundred at the bottom. 17, which algebraic equation best describe the total growth T, something is growing T, in height of pine trees over three-year period, if G equals the rate of growth. So uh, G is how much it's growing per year, okay? So whatever it's growing per year. So if I want to know how much it grew in one year, it would be G. How much it grew in two years, it'd be G times two. If I wanted to know how much it grew in three years, it'd be G times three. So I'm looking for something that says G times three or G of three G. Which situation can represent, rep yeah, be represented by the equation eight Y equals eight X? Nina bought X items at a, to at a store. Each item cost eight. Nina spent a total of Y dollars at the store. Well, that makes sense, right? Nina baked Y batches of cookies. There were eight cookies in each ba in each batch. No, because Y is the total, by the way. Nina correctly answered X questions on a quiz. Each question was worth Y points. No. Nina earned eight dollars for babysitting. Okay, he also earned X dollars for mowing. No, that's completely two different things here. So this makes sense, right? So eight dollars is the price of the item. How many did we buy? X items. So eight times X is the number of items. It's a total, right? And then Y represents the total. And this represents the total. So letter A makes sense. Nineteen. For the data in the graph, which of the following equations can be used to calculate M, the amount of money in dollars, uh, what do you call, collected for T tickets? So, of the first 30 tickets. So we got to pick a value here, right? Pick a value. And I'm going to pick this value because it's nice and easy. So I know that my X, it's an XY value, and the X is 30, and my Y value is 60. All right, so and just to tell you that the Y is the money, money collected, and this is how many they were sold, the X represents. So I sold 30 tickets and I made $60. So again, K equals Y over X, K equals 60 over 30, and K equals 2. That makes sense because each ticket was $2. And if I want to make a, uh, what do you call, an equation out of this, it's going to be times two. The only one that makes sense here is this. If M is the total, right, and T represents tickets, so two dollars times the number of tickets will give me the money, uh, the amount of money that I collected at the end of the evening. So I'm looking for something that says M equals two. So again, if you did Y equals KX, right, Y equals K is two X, and again, this, is uh, that one. Let me pause for a second. Um, pause, pause, pause. So where were we? So that is done. And then we have one more question. 20. A city planner created a table below to show the number of seats for different number of subway cars. Okay. Number of subway cars and the total number of seats. Which so again, this is total is always y, and this is x. So again, it looks like they're uh, what do you call proportional. Six times thirty, eight times thirty is two forty. Ten, ten times thirty is three hundred. So they are definitely proportional. So you can again find the constant proportionality y over x. Uh, let's pick these. One hundred eighty over six. So the constant proportionality is thirty. We already knew that, right? So let's put in an equation. It'd be y equals kx. Let's replace the K with 30, so I get Y equals 30X. Y represents the total, so, and uh, actually we don't have to worry about it because it's in terms of YX. And ta-da, look right here. Okay, so day three.